that, that's a complicated, uh, a complicated internal dilemma. How do you make somebody feel special without creating a monster? The pop psychology says that it's all a matter of good self-image and high self-image and self-validation and love yourself and, and it's creating monsters, selfish, arrogant monsters. On the other hand, if they're depressed, if they're negative, if, they're, if, they're, if they hate themselves, that's also a monster. So how do you balance that? It, it's, not, it's not black and white. It's a, subtle, it's a subtle thing. How do you make a child feel good about themselves without, without creating uh, a narcissist? Feeling good about yourself doesn't mean that you're convinced that you're important. First of all, the need to be convinced that you're important is itself a distasteful thing. A healthy person is a person who doesn't feel a need to think about themselves. They don't need to put themselves down and they don't need to lord it over others. Why? Because the self is not an issue for them. So young children, if they're not damaged, naturally love life and have no time to think about themselves. That's part of their immaturity, of course. They don't care whether they're high self-image, low self-image. It doesn't matter to them. Why would they spend time thinking about themselves when they could be having fun? And everything is fun, because life is fun. How do we maintain that childlike beauty uh, as we get older and as we, as we mature? It's not childish, it's childlike. And you don't want to lose that. The adult maintains that, that beauty by focusing on what is my mission? Am I good? Am I bad? Am I high? Am I low? Am I better than? That, that's, not in, that's not important. What's my mission? That keeps the focus away from self. And that, that is really healthy. But when there is a need, when the child already feels compromised, we have a tendency to go to the opposite extreme. No, no, you're not ugly, you're beautiful. You're just exchanging one problem for another. How do you get the child free of self-concern so that it won't make, a, won't make a difference and it won't matter to the child? Am I important, am I not important? That, that should not even be a... Uh, Big toast. Yeah. So you have to speak in generalities. What is a Jew? What is an Ashama? What are, what are we human beings? What are we here for? Set down some, some basic information, the foundational information. Who are we? What are we? Why are we? Without getting into the, the, the personal um, evaluation of, of the child. In other words, don't pull in the opposite direction. Get to the middle. Where high, high self-image and low self-image are not important. This is, this is where the failure of the secular world, and it's a disastrous failure, 
and, and the failure in psychology in most cases. Too much focus on the self. When you focus on the self, even if it's positive, it's petty. It's tiny. The child who goes for therapy for a long time is so focused on himself all day long, day after day after day. It's not, it's not good. So we see what happens. They get a little older, they go to college, and they become hypersensitive. Every little thing threatens them. Can't handle any criticism whatsoever. Even a microaggression makes them crazy. They're not healthy. And they do have a high self-image. So that's, that's not really not the way to go. We got to get past the smallness of ourselves by seeing a much bigger world. That's what learning Torah is all about. And particularly the way that Ebbe educated our generation. Nobody is a private citizen. Everything you do affects the whole world because all good and, and, and bad and evil are like a generic condition of the world. The good is on one side of the scale and the bad is on the other side of the scale. And one mitzvah can tilt the scale in the positive direction. One sin can tilt the scale in the other direction. So when, a, when you tell a child this is right and this is wrong, it's not just private personal information for their own lives and for their own benefits. You're telling them how what they do affects the world. That itself is very, very healthy. Now they're conscious of a much bigger world than the world that they occupy. They've transcended themselves. That's called growing up. Growing up healthy. So, again, those resources that uh, Yeti mentioned, very, very important to get past ourselves, not deeper into ourselves. And that's why we have to serve God with joy, because if you're not into yourself, then you're not heavy. You're not morbid. You're not petty. You can be happy. Happiness comes from unburdening. And the biggest burden that we put on our children is their self-consciousness. Am I good? Am I bad? Do you love me? Who loves me? Who need? This, this is an unhealthy obsession. To enjoy doing things because those things are important and meaningful and, and, and beautiful. So get the child involved in good activities, take, take the child's attention off themselves and have them enjoy life because life is enjoyable. It doesn't have to be all about yourself all the time. Or did you have something else in mind? Well, what comes to mind is you light the Shabbos candles, right? And of course, your, your daughter is there. And you say to your daughter, you know, lighting Shabbos candles is such a holy thing. I don't know if I'm that holy. So can just anybody light a Shabbos candle? Yeah, any Jew can light a Shabbos candle. That means that you don't have to be holy in order to do holy. That's great. That's the gift of Torah. The gift of Torah is it tells you how to do holy things even if you're not holy. <laughs>